Welcome to our next video in Module 2. We'll continue to work on our plan for our goals. Now that we've identified the mindsets and behaviors and corresponding learning objectives that we'll want to address and teach students to help us meet our goals, we'll now look at possible activities, strategies, and interventions, and pre- and post-assessments of those strategies, activities, and interventions. When identifying potential strategies and activities to help us reach our goals, start by thinking about how you will address the mindsets and behaviors and learning objectives that you identified for each goal. Is there a classroom lesson or series of lessons, a large group presentation or small group you could deliver? Are there other indirect services that might be appropriate, such as parent workshops or conferences, staff development on classroom strategies? Think not only about what you already do, but what are some other options that might be more out of the box thinking? Look at what other schools might be doing, what the research says is effective, and what are some best practices? Also, think about both direct and indirect services you provide to and for students. Direct services are those activities, interventions, and services that we deliver to students. And indirect services are those that we do for or on behalf of students. Direct services include individual and group counseling, classroom and large group instruction, and appraisal and advising. Indirect services include referrals, consultation, and collaboration. You'll want to identify at least one classroom lesson for each of your goals and a small group for your closing the gap goal. If you plan to seek RAMP, know that you'll need to have a total of three classroom lesson plans and lesson plans for one small group that has at least four sessions. We'll work on developing classroom and small group lesson plans later in Module 5. For now, just list possible activities, strategies, and interventions for each of your goals, making sure to include at least one classroom lesson for each goal and a small group for your closing the gap goal. Also, be sure to include both direct and indirect services with your strategies for your closing the gap goal. Finally, as the final part of our student outcome goal plans, we'll draft questions to help create pre and post tests to deliver to students with our interventions. These will be based on our learning objectives and will help us assess if students have attained the attitudes knowledge or skills described by the learning objectives. Very simply, you can take your learning objectives and turn them into questions. It's best if you keep the pre post assessments easy to administer and easy to score. This will make the results easy to analyze. No more than three to five questions or prompts are needed. This keeps your assessment focused on the specific learning objectives and interventions that you're addressing and requires the least amount of time to complete and score the assessment. You can write your questions as short answer questions as we've done here, or using a Likert scale. You can select how many responses you would like to use for your scale from the drop down menu. You can also enter the response items you wish to use. Pre and post assessments are delivered at the start and end of your lesson in small group and can be delivered using whatever method works best for you and your students. You might use a tool such as Google Forms or a Mentee poll or Plickers or any other digital or online tool that can be used for creating assessments. Or you might use paper and pencil. Or even for younger grades, you might even ask questions by a show of hands and tally the results. The method you use to deliver your pre-post assessment is really up to you and what works best for your situation. What ultimately matters is that you're assessing student attainment of the skills and knowledge that you're addressing. Your task to complete will be to list activities, strategies, interventions by school counselors for each goal, making sure to include at least one lesson plan for each of the goals and a small group for the closing the gap goal. The closing the gap goal should also include both direct and indirect services. Next, write one to two pre-post assessment questions for each learning objective. And finally, don't forget to complete your reflection items. This is the end of module two.
you'll now have an annual student outcome goal report for each of your goals formatted in the Ask Us template. As always, we're available for individual support through email, phone, text, or online with Zoom. If you need support, just reach out by calling, texting, or emailing me at kelly at inspiresuccess.org.